Garcia the fourth, or Buddy, as some people know me, and I have the honor of being a co-host for the Martin Arts 20-year celebration. Uh, round of applause for that. <laughs> now, I hope you all join me in answering the call when the arts call you. A few housekeeping notes. Please silence your cell phones. We are recording tonight's celebration to be shared later on our um, YouTube channel. But if you do share pictures on social media, the Instagram, the MyFace, Facebook, <laughs> hashtag Martin Arts, please. Thank you. Now, we've asked our nominees to remember Shakespeare's sage advice. Brevity is the soul of wit. So... Please keep your acceptance speeches short. We don't, have a, we don't have a hook, but we might rush you away. Now, the Martin Arts Awards, as they're more affectionately known as the Martys, have been a signature event since 2003. Tonight and for the past 20 years, we have honored our sound, outstanding artistic, voluntary, and philanthropic achievement in Martin County, which inspires a passion for and participation in the arts in our community. Tonight, you join us to honor this 20-year legacy and reaffirm our commitment to the arts and the artists in Martin County. So, we'll keep this celebration going now with two of our students performing, our uh, dancer Dakota Barriere and clarinetist Colin Belleville, accompanied, actually, by one of our professional artist nominees, Brandon Glick. They will be performing for you tonight, An American in Paris.
Good evening. I'm Carrie Rocks, and I'm so excited to be a co-host for this celebration. Michelangelo once said, I saw an angel in the marble and carved until I set him free. Tonight, we are giving a special tribute to an angel of the arts, Mr. Hank Gonzalez. To do so, I invite Martin Arts board member, Sharon Holt, to the podium to tell you a bit about Hank. Hank Gonzalez spent his life building and creating. He could develop a cost-benefit analysis for a multi-million dollar real estate project in one minute, and then pick up his guitar and write a song in the next. He founded Spotlight Players, community theater group in Palm Beach Gardens, and either directed, produced, or acted in every show for almost a decade sometimes taking on all three roles for a single show. His real estate development career produced award-winning residential developments, and he was the owner's representative for the Kravis Center when it was built 30 years ago. Hank was the president of the board for the Young Singers of the Palm Beaches for 10 years, watching the choir grow from 12 children to over 350 members. In May of this year, the Young Singers dedicated their concert at the Kravis Center to Hank, and over 450 children performed the finale in his honor, singing This Little Light of Mine. Hank served on the Martin Arts Board for many years and was ever active as a volunteer, stage directing our 30th anniversary event, coordinating music for Arts Fest, and much more. Most recently, and until his passing, he was the owner's representative working tirelessly toward our vision for an arts center at the old Stewart High School. We are eternally grateful for his leadership, vision, and passion. Hank's widow, Brenda, and his daughter, Miranda, are here with us tonight, and Miranda will come up to accept this special award. I promise not to read you the whole book. <laughs> My father was a lifelong patron of the arts. He deeply understood the intrinsic connection between art and life. He had a multitude of artistic gifts, but he never pursued those passions for profit. Instead, he was an accomplished real estate developer. In Martin Arts, he found a beautiful marriage of his artistic passion, his professional talents, and his desire to bring people together. The joy and excitement that working on the Stewart High School project brought him was a point of light for him and my family during a difficult time. He understood the immeasurable impact of bringing art into the lives of others, the undeniable truth of art uniting us when the world seems determined to keep us apart. I know that he is overjoyed to see the progress being made towards the completion of this project, a small way to bring more light and unity to the world. My father always saw the best in people. He made everyone feel important. He saw gifts in others that they didn't know they possessed. He always told me I was a writer and always begged me to sing. Now that he has passed, I have the deepest desire to become the version of me that he always saw. So I'll write and I'll sing and I'll allow my art to fill up the space that he left. I cannot fill that space on my own. The creation of this community art center will allow generations of Martin County residents to continue to fill the community and the world at large with love, connection, and hope. Thank you.
In further honor of Hank Gonzalez, we present the Treasure Coast Community Singers Youth Choir under the direction of Dr. Doug Jewett and Martin County High School's Opus under the direction of Amy James, accompanied on the piano by Margaret Krill. They will be singing This Little Light of Mine. And please turn on the light you received from the ushers to really light up this theater for me. Wow, well done, guys. Well done, huh? Well, Eleanor Roosevelt, one of the most influential and greatest leaders of the 20th century, once said, you must do things you think you cannot do. This certainly is a criterion for our next honorary award, Arts Leadership. The recipient of this award has served many, has served as a consistent driving force to keep the arts alive in Martin County. This person or persons is perceived to be ever on the front lines, keeping the arts foremost in the eye of the community. Here is Sharon Holt to present the 2023 Arts Leadership Award. Well, how very special to be presenting this award here on the stage of the Lyric Theater. Since falling in love with the magic of music and performance at age six, while singing in the Treasure Coast Opera Society's La Boheme, Kai Fontaine has pursued her dream of being on or behind or around the stage. She has a passion for the arts, and has spent most of her life performing, producing, volunteering, and advocating for arts,
culture, and historic preservation. Kai is the president and CEO of the Lyric Theater and has faithfully served the organization since 2008 when she joined as operations manager. During her tenure, she has expanded the Lyric's arts and education programs, including the Lyric's awesome summer camp, the family fun series, the Kid Ticks program, and she has also broadened the Lyric's overall programming, drawing in ever more diverse audiences. She has collaborated with local artists and not-for-profit organizations to provide them with a venue for their cultural and artistic programming and also fundraising efforts. Kai has made it her mission to ensure that the arts are accessible and affordable for everyone. I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with Kai for over eight years. As a board member of both Martin Arts and The Lyric, I am very happy to present the 2023 Arts Leadership Award to Kai Fontaine. know me two minutes is just not enough. <laughs> Accepting this award was very difficult for me. There are so many arts leaders in this beautiful community. Just look around you. Look to your left. Look to your left. Look to your right. The arts are what brings us together. And together, we give permission to those around us to express themselves, to share emotions, to chase dreams, and to expose ours and their inner selves. Each one of us is an arts leader. The nominees, the other honorary award recipients, our supporters, and many others that aren't here tonight teachers, mentors, parents, family members, neighbors, and friends. I am truly honored to be selected by the Martin Arts Foundation Board. Thank you so very much for this prestigious award. From the time I was six years old, as Sharon mentioned, performing in my first opera, I knew that I wanted to be immersed in the arts. And I'm so, so very lucky to live that dream. I have been blessed to have so many people that have supported me on my journey. I wish to thank my board of directors, past and present, many of whom are here. Please clap. My amazing and hardworking staff, my tribe, all who give so much of themselves and their dedication for making the arts accessible here at the Lyric Theater for the Treasure Coast community. Without them, I am not the leader that I am. Thank you. They all deserve that applause. To my incredibly loving husband for understanding my passion, for the many, many, many long nights and days, for the sacrifices made to support me in the good times and the very challenging times. Luca, thank you for being my rock to lean against. I'm so grateful for you and for your love. I would not be here today without you. <laughs> to my dad, James who has endlessly and selfishly given so much of himself to support me to follow my dreams since I was six years old to be immersed in the arts. 
He was the first to hear me utter my dream that first night of dress rehearsal of that opera La Boheme. He was the first to support me and be there for everything I did. Most importantly, for being the one person who did not call me crazy and fully supported me for when I, there was an opportunity here at the Lyric Theater. Thank you, Dad. And to everyone here, never, ever, never let go of your dreams. Never, ever, never say no. Surround yourself with the people who believe in your passions and accept every challenge thrown in your direction. We are all arts leaders, and it's our role to keep the magic of art and culture alive every day, everywhere we are, and in everything that we do. We make our community a better place, a safer place, a place to live, to work, to play, and to explore. Arts and culture are the only things that defy generations while defining who we are as individuals and as a community. I wholeheartedly thank you for the honor of representing each and every single one of us here tonight and those that could not be present with us. Thank you all so very much for making the arts possible here in our community. We all are arts leaders. It has been proven time and time again in countless studies that students who actively participate in arts education are twice as likely to read for pleasure, have strengthened problem solving and critical thinking skills, are four times more likely to be recognized for academic achievement, four times more likely to participate in a math and science fair. This quote is from the legendary composer, Quincy Jones. But who guides this amazing young talent? Their teachers and mentors. So it is altogether fitting that our next honorary award be given to just such a person and presented tonight by one of her peers, Dr. Anita Caswell, board member for Martin Arts and Murray Middle School's Choral and Drama Director. Mr. John Egan is beginning his 10th year of teaching at Anderson Middle School. A Martin County native and a University of Florida graduate, teaching music has been his primary professional goal since the age of 15. During his tenure at Anderson Middle School, Mr. Egan has grown the music program from 91 students to over 450. He received the honor of being named Anderson, Anderson's Middle School's Teacher of the Year in 2018, and he received the school's first ever superior ratings in both choir and band. Yes, that is worthy of an applause. The Florida Band Masters Association has honored Mr. Egan with two prestigious awards the Tom Bishop Award, which recognizes band directors who make remarkable positive impacts on their programs, and the Linda Mann Five-Year Superior Award, which is given to programs who receive superior ratings for five consecutive years. Under his direction, Anderson Middles is the first Martin County recipient of this award since 2005. 
having taught over 1,300 music students in his career thus far, Mr. Egan remains passionate about providing rich and meaningful musical experiences and memories for his students. I am proud to present the 2023 Excellence in Arts Education Award to Mr. John Egan. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to first thank the Martin Arts Foundation for, uh, of course, this um, wonderful honor, and Dr. Caswell for that uh, beautiful um, introduction. Uh, of course, uh, not just for that, but for supporting the arts in Martin County, our wonderful hometown, and for encouraging everyone to share their gift with us. Um, it's certainly uh, an honor to be uh, invited here tonight to uh, share that uh, celebration with everyone. Um, if there's one thing I've learned in 10 years of teaching at Anderson, uh, it is that the young people in Stewart um, and possibly all over the world uh, need the arts now more than ever. <laughs> and so um, I just, I would like to encourage everyone to continue sharing your gift. Um, the, the students need that. They are getting it, which is great, but they definitely need it. Uh, it's certainly a wonderful thing to come into the Cultural Center and to see people who've impacted me, not just professionally, but since I was 11. Um, one of the great things about growing up in this area is that you seem to know everybody. And uh, walking in, seeing um, Amy Clark, Alan Lindsay Hager performing um, at, the, at the Cultural Center, it was just a wonderful thing to remember that growing up here has just been so wonderful, not just because Stewart is wonderful, but because the arts. Um, have impacted me and um, all of us who have grown up here. And so uh, I'd like to just thank a few people, um, my parents and my sister for encouraging me to, of course, start in music and for never missing a performance, even in college, driving up three and a half hours to Gainesville. Um, <laughs> and still come to my middle school band concerts um, to this day. Uh, my beautiful and wonderful fiance who is uh, supported me in the most difficult moments of my career and continuously points me towards God. And um, lastly, but certainly not least, um, the one who's anointed me with the, the oil to just do the best job that I can at, at Anderson Middle School, and that is uh, the Lord above. I thank him for my strength, and so, amen. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, thank you so much for this honor, and um, I, I, I'm just very humbled to be a, a member of the Martin County Arts and uh, be teaching Anderson. So thank you very much. more than the composer to the next student performance, Mr. Stevie Wonder, here to perform his tribute to music pioneers in Sir Duke, our student nominees, Christina Josie, Vicki Seagott, and Louis Medina, accompanied by Brandon Glick.
What amazing talent we have in our own backyard. How about that? All right, so there you go. I found my spot, so it's okay. All right, <laughs> art is never finished. This quote from the legendary Leonardo da Vinci illustrates perfectly our next honorary award recipients. Corporate sponsorship is an integral part of any nonprofit. Part of their budget, in particular, corporate sponsorship is important as part of any arts organization's budget. Through our corporate leadership in the Arts Award, we recognize large companies and small who have a commitment to funding, supporting, and participating in the arts and cultural life of our community. Now, through their gifts, arts and cultural activities and events have been so enhanced. A strong and vibrant arts community is a significant driver of economic success. Please welcome Martin Arts Board Chair, Liz Bonham, to present the 2023 Corporate Leadership in the Arts Award. Good evening. Located on Colorado Avenue in the heart of downtown Stewart, Jeff Bowers and his team of craftsmen and artisans have been serving our local community since 1977, applying their talents to building custom homes, remodeling and renovations, historical reconstruction, and light commercial projects. Every project can be seen <laughs> as a different type of art. While working in much different mediums than most folks in the arts, the team at Masterpiece Design Build appreciates being able to make a positive impact in clients' lives and lifestyles. A person's home is much more than just a house. It's where families live and build memories. So they do work that really matters. Jeff and Lisa Bowers have been longtime supporters of Martin Arts. Jeff has served on the board of directors and is a past chair. They have been heavily involved in Arts Fest for many years as sponsors and volunteers. We couldn't do Arts Fest without Jeff Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Lisa, and their team try every day to make Stuart Martin County a better place to call home. Join me in thanking Jeff, Lisa, and Masterpiece Design Build for their corporate commitment to our community and to the arts. Good evening, everyone. They told me we had two minutes, and all of a sudden I feel very inadequate. So, so um, we'll get through it then. We are Jeff and Lisa Bowers of Masterpiece Design Build. We are located down on Colorado Avenue, right down the street. We've been blessed to be an anchor in downtown Stewart for many years. <clears throat> We're truly honored to be selected for this Corporate Leadership Award. And you know, there's a very long list of highly respected people and companies um, that are on the board in the Cultural Courthouse Center. And uh, I was looking at that list earlier. It's, some of them are in the book, in the program tonight. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's really flattering to even be included on that list. <clears throat> I'd like to take a minute to tell you who we are, and why we think supporting the arts is so important. 
I usually don't get nervous. Liz, I don't know what's going on. I can't, I can't see this. The obvious one is the connection of the company name, Masterpiece Design Build. Um, but you'd be wrong. That really has nothing to do with it. Um, we're, we're just, just coincidence. We're a design build general contracting firms focusing on custom homes and renovations, like Liz said earlier. But really, it runs way deeper than that. <clears throat> we're longtime locals. Um, grew up here, been in business for 45 years, raised three kids through our local school system. Now we're proud grandparents. But we know that what makes our community special is more than just the pretty beaches and rivers we have. A strong and vibrant arts community is a major part of what makes the social fabric of Martin County so special. Seems we've been involved for quite a long time. Maybe it hasn't been that long, but it's fun, it's a lot of fun, and um, the years do go by very quickly, don't they? Um, we've known so many of the awesome people who have helped build this organization over the years. And in brevity, I didn't really want to mention any names, so I won't, but you all know who you are, and we love you very much. Um, we feel blessed to be a part of it, basically. <clears throat> As a former board member, past board chair, and a longtime Arch Fest site ops guy, driving around in a golf cart, and as a corporate sponsor, we will continue to support Martin Arts in their mission. For us, it is more than, it's one more thing, for us, it's one more thing that we can help with to define Martin County as the amazing special place that we call home. And in closing, Please know that we look forward to many more future gallery events, many, many more Arts Fests. And uh, by the way, we'll see you at Arts Fest in February. Thank you. Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, said, it took me quite a long time to develop a voice, and now that I have it, I am not going to be silent. <laughs> this is a great introduction for our two student literary nominees. We were given a task, oh, they were given a task, in keeping with our theme of reaffirmation. They were asked to write about how the arts reaffirm. Here to share their writing talent with you is Rebecca Madaba. Rebecca is a New York City-based actor that works in theater, film, and voiceovers who fell in love with performing and connecting with characters. This love was solidified while completing her BA in Business and Art History at the University of Georgia. For the past two years or so, she has resided in our region of Florida, and we are excited to bring her to the stage tonight. Good evening. I have the distinct honor of reading aloud the work of two incredibly talented young writers. As Carrie mentioned, they were given a prompt to write about how the arts reaffirm us. Here is the first of those, written by Kayla Bittner. That's right. Standing here today, I can say that I am not the most confident. Self-doubt lingers day to day with the things I do and the things I want to achieve. Sometimes I feel as if I want to jump out of my skin, looking in the mirror, wanting to fix all the things I think looks wrong, wishing I could redo the things I have done incorrectly and erase the failures I've had. I wish I could look at myself through someone else's eyes. I know deep down I am strong, but sometimes I cave in and I feel weak. I'm sure everyone can agree that sometimes they ponder on the thought of looking different or acting different or having different things. Sometimes you may think you have it all figured out, but in reality, you don't. But if you take a look around you, come to notice that we're all still growing. 
and taking life day by day. We might get insecure or might think of ourselves as smaller than we are, but self-love is vital for the heart and the mind. Telling yourself you can do anything and putting hard work into achieving your goals. Sometimes we have failures and must pass obstacles in life, but as time goes on, we realize that the failures we had are really what helped us learn and grow. Those failures blossomed into beautiful successes. Picking yourself back up and telling yourself, I can, and stop saying, I can't. If you ever think you're struggling alone, I just want you to know that standing here today, now confident, I can say that I've had my fair share of failures. And sometimes I feel lost in this complicated world, but I genuinely believe that you can do anything you put your mind to, even if you encounter obstacles on the way. It's okay to apply. That is a sound writers seldom get to hear. Indeed. Next, we have Jasmine Craddy. The arts bring us together through building community. It reaffirms our place in humanity and allows every one of us to be separate from each other, but together builds a whole Frankenstein of artistic value to the world around us. All forms of art, whether written, spoken, played, or otherwise, show off an aspect of our community. The murals on the side of gas stations, the carvings on the sides of cave walls, the flags we fly, and even the graffiti you scrubbed off the side of your house are all forms of art that should never be forgotten. In times of war and peace, art stands as a human action, one that has and will withstand centuries. All through history, art has been a form of expression and documentation, but it's also something that is free. Maybe the paintbrushes at Hobby Lobby cost a little much, and tickets to museums are expensive, but viewing art with your eyes holds a beauty that no amount of money could ever add up to. The art hanging on a kindergarten classroom's walls seems like scribbles to you, but to that kid and their parents, that is the truest form of art. Historical art can offer us a perspective on something we never think about now whether that be war or tragedy, a haunting Edgar Allan Poe story, or a twisted daydream of Rembrandt's. We still get to see inside the mind of someone we have looked up to since we were little. There is nothing else in this world like art. Mm -mm. Being able to understand what it's like to see through the eyes of somebody you can't ever talk to, to know how their mind works even for just a second, there's nothing like that. Art allows us all to be different. It allows me to wear bright socks with a neon shirt. It allows my friends to slap stickers on the sides of guitars and to tap away at a keyboard with seeming, seemingly meaningless code to create something altogether beautiful. Yet, art allows us all to live as one being, one human mass. Millions of art pieces are separate on our own, but each and every piece gives meaning to human life. This reaffirms not only our own souls, but our altogether purpose on this planet. Our purpose is to create. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you, young writers, for your words. Good evening. I'm so very grateful that you have joined us for tonight's festivities. We are about halfway through, and I can't wait to see the rest of the night's performances and to celebrate with our award recipients. My name is Liz Bonin, and I have, been the honor, I have the honor to serve as chairman of the board for Martin Arts. Our foundation is here to support the arts community and the Arts Council. We are actively pursuing our long-term vision of creating an art center for the community. 
I am very proud to say that we move closer to that moment each month. If you would like to learn more, please reach out to our CEO, Nancy Turrell, or any of our board members for a conversation and to schedule a tour of the historic Stewart High School building. Tonight, I have the honor to say thank you to the many people who made the Martin Arts Awards possible. Our committee members, for nearly a year, this committee has gathered to plan tonight's events. Join me in saying thank you to Dr. Anita Caswell, Amy Simber Snodgrass, Sharon Hagen, Lisa Renee Ludlam, Marnie McKee, Deborah Melillo, Andy Morjan, Faith Paul, Barbara Wells, and Crystal Wynn Eckhart. Please join me in a round of applause for these committee members. They deserve it. They put on a wonderful show. This year, we launched fundraising efforts to build a fund to secure the revenue needed for scholarships well into the future. Knight and Ann Kiplinger, the Wong Family Foundation, and several other donors have stepped up to begin the effort. Thank you. We have raised... <laughs> you. We have raised 50% of our initial goal of $20,000. If you're interested in supporting this scholarship fund, there's an envelope in your program book. All of the students nominated are so very talented. The job to select just one during the review process is a monumental task. But each year, our judges rise to the challenge. Thank you, judges. Our board of directors steer our strategic vision and serve throughout the year to oversee the implementation of our mission, inspire participation and passion for the arts in the community. Thank you, board members, for your leadership and your continuing support. Thank you. Our sponsors for this event are noted on the board in the lobby and in your program and on the screen earlier tonight. The sponsors provide the much needed underwriting for tonight's event. Martin Arts is a nonprofit organization. Donors and sponsors make up a significant portion of our annual budget. And we are so grateful to all of you who become members and sponsors. You can see in the program some of the other activities we facilitate, like Arts Fest and the Courthouse Cultural Center Galleries. Congratulations to all nominees and award recipients. Each of you inspire me to be on the board and volunteer to help grow our arts community. Without your talent, time, and treasure, our community would be much less vibrant. And now, let's continue with the program. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> it says right here. But really, thank you, Liz. Thank you so much. Uh, now, we move on to present the professional artist nominees in the literary, performing, and visual arts. Yeah, there we go. Now, the awards will be given this evening to some of the most creative artists and performers in Martin County. Their contributions may not only impact the arts in Martin County, but also inspire others to find their passion and provide us great pride in the community we all live, work, and play in. <laughs> so please take a moment to learn more about each one of our nominees in that program you have. And now, here are our professional artist nominees for 2023. Faith Burrier. Brian Child. John Cambriello.
Jennifer Collins. Sherry Dunn. Luann Dwyer. Dot Galvin. Brandon Glick. Charles Douglas Jones. Heidi Lee. Samantha Messina. Sonia Mongar. Andy Morjon. Jordan Sylvia. Again, congratulations on your nomination. Now, this is really a night where the honor of the nomination is just as important as being selected as the award recipient. Our community is more vibrant because of the talented artists and professional artists we have. In the words of the great painter Henry Matisse, creativity takes courage. First, on to our literary award. This author began her career as a physical therapist. First, as a practicing therapist, and then as a chair and professor of physical therapy. She has more recently become a significant author. Her first book is a novel about a love that will not die. Her second novel, set on Hutchinson Island, love that place, is also a story of loss, not giving in, and the power of hope, and the redemptive role of what water can play. To quote her, Recognizing the artist within has brought joy and inspiration. I'm grateful for this awakening and look forward to cultivating it further. I would like to ask last year's recipient, Crystal Eckhart. <laughs> yes, round of applause for Crystal. <laughs> to join me on stage to present the Marty for the literary arts to Jennifer Collins. did not bring my phone up here to text my son, although that's very tempting. It's um, because this morning, as I was contemplating what I should say if this happened, um, this quote came up on my phone, and those of you who may have read my books know that quotes inspire me. I use one at the beginning of each chapter, um, so I thought this was a sign. The quote is, don't worry about having the right words. Worry more about having the right heart. Aww. By Max Licata. So first I thought how ironic that someone nominated in literary arts should not worry about having the right words. That's kind of <laughs> all you do, right? Um, so I didn't, and this will be from the heart. And I guess the word that comes to mind straight from my heart is gratitude. Um, gratitude to first Martin Oates 
Council for recognizing that I'm an artist. You, you heard in that little blurb, I wasn't an artist, I didn't think, till very recently. And um, took, took some major ad adversity, some profound loss, and started writing just to give a voice to something that I had never read in all of my years of reading, and somehow came upon this realization that loss and gratitude, grief and joy, these things all exist together. And the, these light bulbs starting, started going off, and when this nomination came up and there was a prompt about something like, what do the arts mean to you? I'm like, oh my gosh, that's what I was doing? I, I just wrote, and I guess I didn't worry about the words. I worried about just coming from the heart. So, um, as I said, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude to the council, to my amazing uh, family, and as I say all the time, family of friends who have um, supported me through loss and are now supporting me in this journey of joy and gratitude. So, thank you. Now, I would like to ask Martin Arts Chair, Liz Bonham. Liz, I'm calling you again. <laughs> to join me in presenting the award for Performing Artist. Since 2018, this performer has been the Director of Music and Liturgy and Artistic Director at St. Mary's Concert Series at the St. Mary's Episcopal Church. To quote him directly, music, and probably the arts in general, is a language which can express deep feelings. Great art is honest, and the arts are always challenging us to just slow down and experience the now. The 2023 Marty for the Performing Arts goes to Brandon Glick. Well, thank you. Um, this is the moment when you find out why I'm usually sitting behind the piano and not speaking. <laughs> so if you're really bored, you can start to count how many times I say, uh... <laughs> it really is an honor to win this award. Thank you so much. Um, thank you to Marie Jury Bimish who nominated me. Thank you uh, to Nancy Turrell and uh, the Martin Arts uh, community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and of course, you know, I, I do have to say thanks to the many people, including my parents, including my, uh, my teachers, uh, Gladys Wheeland, who I started when taking piano when I was seven, to Dr. McElwain, my college teacher, and others who had to endure so many hours of just horrible playing and practice 
and we're so supportive. <laughs> Thank you to all of our teachers out there. Um, and, and seriously, the thank you so much to the clergy and the parishioners of St. Mary's for your support um, in, in all of my weird and, and um, experiments with music and the arts. So thank you for when it fails and when it succeeds for supporting me. Um, it, we really are so fortunate to have such a rich culture of musicians and, um, and artists here in Martin County. It, it's, it's so phenomenal. I'm learning one of the keys to success is to not be afraid to surround myself with musicians that are much better than me. Um, it's, it's such a delight to work with so many wonderful music, musicians. Um, there, was, there was a, I can't remember if that's my first or second one, but uh, the St. Mary's Concert Series, which I love to run, our motto, or our, our mission statement is spreading hope and joy through music. And that definition of hope comes, it's been very key to a lot of my work um, with music and is, is kind of the thing that many times propels me forward. And it is, it comes from a quote from Dallas Willard, who was a a professor of philosophy at University of Southern California. And he defined hope as the anticipation of good. And I think that's such a beautiful thing that the arts, and well, my field especially, music, is that it can bring people together that really don't have a lot in common. And it, does, it doesn't matter about politics, it doesn't matter about anything else, but somebody, there are many people suddenly coming together and what brings them together is this love of whatever. It could be Johann Sebastian Bach or it could be Stevie Wonder. And it's so, so beautiful. And I'm so thankful to be here in Martin County and to work in the arts community. Congratulations to all the nominees. It's truly an honor to serve here in Martin County. Thank you. The final award in the professional category, that is, is for visual art. An artist's work in the arts community over the past four years has been with the Martin Artisans Guild. Ah, I hear you back there. <laughs> uh, she is on the board of directors. We're getting warmer. And they have built the guild to over 60 members. 70 some, thank you for the correction. And still growing, I'm sure. Right on. To quote her, it has been a true labor of love. I feel it's imperative to keep arts alive and active in our community. Please join me in congratulating the 2023 visual artist, Dot Galfin. people in this category tonight. I certainly did not expect this, and I greatly appreciate it. The board, um, uh, thank you, and Nancy and uh, Jennifer, I know how hard you all work at doing this, and it's really appreciated. 
I had a little something just in case, and um, I lost it in the ladies' room at dinner. <laughs> so, um, and I'm a visual artist, and, and so this is what I have to say. And I'm also right brain, so this is what I have to say. <laughs> but, um, I, I did have a little something, but it's funny because it changed when I was listening to the other people up here tonight, and it changed when I was at dinner with my, um, my posse of my really wonderful friends from the Guild. And um, someone said about how um, when I was at dinner, a woman came up to me that I've known forever, Mary Shaw. I don't know how many of you know Mary. And I've known Mary, and I think I had her son in Sunday school, and my parents knew Mary, and she came up to me. My parents have been gone for probably seven years now, and she said, you know, your parents would be so proud of you, Dot. And I thought, you know, that was, that was very sweet. And they would be, they would be. And that's a lot of what we do is about. You know, we want to we want to um, we want to have recognition for what we do, and it was it was it was a lovely thought, and and we do we want to have recognition for what we do, but we don't want to stand up and say you know give me give me applause do this, but we want to be recognized for the work that we do, and it's nice when we get that, and this is this is lovely to get this, it really is. But it's, it's, you know, it's hard work, and we all know that. It's very hard work. We work for years and years and years to get to the professional level. And, uh, you know, my parents would be proud of me. And it's nice to think that. And I appreciated that tonight, Mary. That meant a lot to me. Um, and I think that, that all of us need to think about that, about how hard we work to get to this level. And um, anyway, I just, I thank all of you for, um, for, you know, coming tonight, and I thank so much for the um, for this award. And I really want to thank. What? One more thing. One more thing. Um, one of the other things that is very important to me is how hard uh, and how much work that we put into that I, as a board of directors, put into the Martin Artisans Guild. I'm very proud of that, and our Palm Room Gallery. That has been such a source of pride an accomplishment to me. And if you are not familiar with that, please look into it because it's a wonderful thing. We have a gallery at the, um, in, uh, in Harbor Bay Plaza and it is, um, it is a wonderful thing that the Guild is so very proud of. So speaking of being proud of, so thank you so very much. I really am honored. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. There are those who work behind the artists and are instrumental in the beauty that we see and hear. The Art Service Award honors an individual who participates in donating time, encouraging support for the organizations and the arts in the community, and is truly dedicated to the cause of the nonprofits that benefit from their attention. One who truly personifies this is our 2023 Art Service Award recipient, Sue Sokol. I invite former board chair, Dr. Marie Juriette Beamish, to join me on stage to tell you a bit about Sue before she receives her award. Marie? Good evening, and it is such an honor to be here to present this award as well as the next award. 
I've known Sue Sokel since I first came here 20 years ago and got connected with the Atlantic Classical Orchestra. Shortly after Sue and her husband moved to Stewart in 1995, a friend invited her to a concert and told her about the volunteer organization supporting the Atlantic Classical Orchestra and was known as the Stewart Friends. She jumped in with two feet. Actually, I don't think she has three, so I think she has both her feet. She jumped in with both feet and has, over these years, served in each officer position and chaired most of the fundraisers since 2004. She has sold ads, solicited raffle prizes, brought in meals to orchestra members between the 4 and 8 p.m. concerts here in the Lyric Theater, served as an usher, and licked between 2,000 and 3,000 <laughs> stamps and envelopes and flaps for mailings before they had self-sticks. In return, she has had the opportunity to experience outstanding musical performances, gain a broader knowledge of composers, and meet some of the guest artists over the 26 years she has been a volunteer with the orchestra. She says, quote, my life has been enriched by the experiences I have had as a volunteer and a patron, and I wish the same for anyone who has not yet served as a volunteer. I'd like to thank Martin Arts for this honor. It was completely unexpected, a very big surprise when my name was announced. I also want to thank Marie. The honor is even more special because it's being given to me by my dear friend Marie Juriet Beamish, whose inspiration with the musical world is, is unparalleled in Stewart, at least, if not more than that. A lot of quotes have been put out. Yes, yay, Marie. <laughs> A lot of quotes have been made tonight. I have one also. Tolstoy said, music is love looking for its voice. I heard the voice, and it came from the Atlanta Classical Orchestra, and it did draw me to devote hours, days, weeks, months, years, to serving them so that they could pass on to the people of the Treasure Coast the beautiful gift of music. If you've never gone to a concert by the ACO, I encourage you to do so. January, February, March, and April are available. It's a wonderful organization, and I've been pleased to meet many wonderful artists, conductors, and especially made friends with the friends of the ACO. Music is a gift, and we should share it among everybody. Cool. Thank you. Achievement in the Arts Award. The writer C.S. Lewis said, there are far better things ahead than any we have left behind. While this is an inspiring quote for the future of Martin Arts, we feel it is important to honor the artistic contributions over the span of a lifetime. The recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award exemplifies this perfectly, and to present the award, Dr. Marie Juriette Beamish. Grace is another person I first met when coming to Stewart 20 years ago. Grace turned 101.
She turned 101 on October 18th, and we had the honor of having her at our home for that celebration. And at the Women's Club, and, and, and. She was born to Italian immigrants before the Depression, obviously. Uh, she excelled in her studies and graduated from high school at age 16. How many years ago was that? A lifelong learner, she taught herself computer programming and developed the first computer accounting system for the hospital she worked for. When she and her husband moved to Florida in 1987, she took on a variety of leadership roles with local organizations and was very active as an artist, particularly in quilting and winning first place awards each year for her art. When she first heard over this past year that school boards were beginning to ban books, she became outraged and she's become the poster child for this. I have to start the sentence again. When she heard over this past year that school boards were beginning to ban books, she became outraged and made a quilt which depicted some of the books that were being banned. Yes! Word about this got to Ari Belshi on MSNBC, and he interviewed her twice on his program with her quilt. You can watch it on YouTube. Grace also brought her quilt and spoke at a Martin County School board meeting. The video of that speech went viral. Later this fall, a Paramount Plus documentary will be released that covers books burning, and she will be one of the individuals featured in the documentary. She wanted me to tell you it will be streaming. <laughs> and also, I must say that uh, she's become a very close family member, and my brother, who lives out in California, now is in possession for the Berkeley Public Library system of quilt number two with different books on it, and it is equally gorgeous and equally famous, and it's being raised, used to, as a fundraiser for uh, the Berkeley uh, Public Library System. Yeah. Just want to make sure it's the right one. So this is for Grace. of living, I will not stop. Believe me, what I want to tell you, let's get the art and the culture of all of our people. All human beings are equal. And when you take it in that sense, remember that there is where you're going to evoke, get all the, all the things that we need for the art and culture.
We can all do it. Do the best you can for the fortunate people you have among you and bring out the art and the culture from all of them. Thank you. Jacobs, accompanied by Brandon Glick, performing The Prayer by David Foster and Carol Bayer Sager. Take it to the Give us faith. 
Wow! Wow, wow, that's all we have to say about that. Wow, bravo, guys. Now, oh, you know what? <laughs> My first line is a wow exclamation point. <laughs> it wasn't need, it didn't need, be need to be written down. What an amazing performance. <sighs> we just have to take a second, right? Good job. All right, so now is time to meet all of our student nominees. Through the nomination process, we recognize students who reside in Martin County and are, that are in their senior year of high school. Each student is nominated. They submit a profile and are interviewed by a panel of judges. Um, the recipient of the award in each student category receives a scholarship. When the judges consider the nominees, they look for an individual in each category with a proven record of artistic excellence, outstanding civic responsibility, and whose leadership has helped to improve our community. Information about their activities, accomplishments, and awards can be found in your program, so I encourage you to take some time and look to see all the great things these students have done. I would also like to remind everyone that tonight's performances by the student nominees were not part of the judging. These performances are just for our enjoyment and to see the great future of the arts right here in Martin County. Our last screen presentation will showcase our student artist nominees. Aiden Alvarez. <laughs> Julia Artgraves. <laughs> Colin Belleville. <laughs> Dakota Burrier. <laughs> Kayla Bittner. Addison Boyer, Danielle Boyle, Jasmine Craddy, Daphne Dalton, Logan Jacobs, Christina Josie. Patrick Martin, Luis Medina, Star Reed, Sidra Rowell, Victoria Seagot. Piper Sturdivant, Chloe Talton, please give these amazing nominees a round of applause. They really deserve it, and that's our future right there, guys. And now to help me present the awards to these amazingly talented students are the founding chairs of this event, Jeanette Mueller and Karen Viana. On behalf of everyone here tonight, Karen? Ah, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought the spotlight was looking for you. <laughs> Tonight, thank you, Karen and Jeanette, for leading the way 20 years ago and still being involved so many years later. 
This is quite a legacy that shows your commitment to our vibrant community. All right, so here we are. The first student award is for literary arts. And the award goes to a student at Martin County High School. Her passion for the arts comes from her family that allowed her to be free and to express herself through painting, piecing together miniature models, and writing all her thoughts into notebooks. She has used her coding skills to create multiple websites, one of which is being used by a large company based in Kentucky. Her future plans are to go on to college to study game design and development to create virtual worlds for stories to take place in and also to create stories that go along with them. Please join me in congratulating Jasmine Craddy. proofread every single thing I read before it gets out. So <laughs> thank you, and thank you all for coming. The next student award is for performing arts. The award goes to a student at <laughs> South Fork High School, who has always had a love for music and has performed in one capacity or another his whole life. Recently, when his choral teacher was out for surgery, he taught her class. He was also the only student from his high school chosen to go to FMEA Allstate. Now that's a big deal. After high school, he hopes to attend Stetson University to earn a bachelor's degree in vocal performance and then attend FSU for a master's degree. His career goal is to teach music in high schools. Please join me in congratulating Logan Jacobs. Everybody, I did not know I was supposed to be giving a speech. Had I won, um, I just want to shout out everybody who's ever been supporting me through this. It's awesome, and I'm probably gonna cry later, but it's gonna be alright. Um, I need to just say, Miss Reba Satchel, Miss Carrie Rocks, and Dr. Anita Caswell have been game changing for me in my life, and allowing me to get here and allowing me to do this, it's been an honor. I love you guys. Thank you. Have a good night. I just, I just wanted to say a few words um, very briefly. Um, Jeanette and I started this thing 20 years ago, and we had a wonderful time. I think we were a lot better organized, though, than we looked like on the stage here. Because <laughs> we had no idea what we were doing here. And, um, but anyway, it's been a very enjoyable run with the Martin County Arts. And um, 
It's been wonderful being friends with Nancy. You know, we're, we've been besties for years, and it seemed like everything that she got into, she sucked me into it, and everything I got into, I sucked her into it. But um, this has been one of the best things that we have done together. We just, and over the years, we've unwavering support for the Arts Council. So it's our pleasure. Thank you. I think we have one more. We have one more. Ladies, thank you so much. You, the legacy you left behind will continue for years and years to come. So thank you, thank you. Uh, the next student we have, oh yes, absolutely. That deserves an applause. The next student award is for visual arts. The award goes to a student at South Fork High School. For eight years, her focus was classical and contemporary dance. Then an injury forced her to change to watercolor and painting. Then an injury uh, needlepoint and a watercolor paint on fabric are some of her favorite projects. Through her medium for art has evolved, her passion has remained strong. At the beginning of her junior year, she set out with a partner to create a fundraiser for underprivileged sailors in need of safety gear. From this, the Giving Gear Project was born. Infographics is something that she is very, very passionate about, and her love for marketing grew. She plans to major in college in graphic design and business marketing. Please join me in congratulating Daphne Dalton. Close to the end. What a night, though, right? Um, and it's almost over, but not quite. I am. I have a few housekeeping things to do, and before the rest of my closing comments, I want to invite all our incredible award recipients to stay for a group photo. So please come forward to the stage after the closing number. And for those of you who would like to celebrate more this evening. Uh, we are, and aren't ready for it to end, please join us across the street at the Black Marlin for a light bite or a nightcap. And it's not too early to think about 2024. Nominations are open on martinarts.org, so if you're inspired tonight to be a nominator or some incredible person in our community for next year, you might as well go ahead and do it while it's on your mind. I would also like to make one more soft pitch this evening for support of our new scholarship fund. You can see these amazing students and all the good they're going to bring into the world. Um, so support helping us to help to support them as we move forward uh, with a scholarship fund would be fantastic. So I thank you in advance. And of course, tonight's ticket sales and sponsorships help us grow the arts and arts opportunities for all in our community. I have one last thank you. Liz did a lot of thank yous, but I want to thank our team here at Martin Arts, our staff. They are dedicated, they're, they're mostly up here in this box. They are a dedicated, passionate, small, but mighty team who support our volunteers in making all this magic happen. So I want to thank you for that.
And this, this amazing group of women who serve this organization with a passion really surpasses anything an employer could ever ask for. And with that being said, I have a special note of appreciation tonight for one person, Jennifer Hearn, who does not like to come out in front of the curtain. But she, Jennifer, she has worked tirelessly. <laughs> I know, I know. I wasn't sneaky enough, I tried. She has worked tirelessly over the past 10 years, starting with our arts education programming and growing to take on all of our signature events, including Arts Fest, the Martin Arts Awards, and running everything in the Courthouse Cultural Center Gallery. So Jennifer, let us all say thank you. And we appreciate everything you have given to us and our community. goodies for you. Careful, it will break. Uh, no speeches, <laughs> because like Nancy, I will start crying. Uh, but I can only say that I am honored to say that so many of you in this audience are my friends, and that means the most to me. So thank you. So my final thought for the evening, following a passion for the arts is something that many put aside until a time when they can afford to follow that dream. Fortunately, many talented people that we have honored and recognized over the past 20 years have chased their dreams and achieved accolades for having done so. The roster of our past recipients speaks to what having support from the community can give to an artist in the way of confidence that allows them to continue to follow their artistic visions and dreams. Thank you for embracing us, and we hope you will continue to support the arts and artists in Martin County well into the future. Our final number is an anthem for following our dreams. Enjoy Climb Every Mountain with Kerry Rocks, Reva Rogers, and David Axton. Thank you, and have a great night. Um.